Welcome back to the channel. I'm Nick. I'm Damo. So today we've got a Discord poll winner for you. Uh, this has been requested in the comments uh, in the past, to be fair. Um, put a Discord poll together. This was a clear winner, wasn't it? A hundred percent, yeah. It's the catastrophic flop of 10 cent beer night. Yeah. I think I can imagine where this is possibly going. Yeah, if you give thousands <laughs> of people 10 cent beer, uh, I can't I can't imagine there'll be too many outcomes. Even in today's inflation for you this is 1974 yeah, so yeah. this is still less than a dollar so yeah. it's less than a dollar imagine going to a game for less than a not going to the game for less than a dollar but the beer <laughs> less than a dollar it's gonna be crazy so yeah really looking forward to this one Should be on june 4th 1974 the cleveland indians ran one of the most tragic promotional events in the history of major league baseball 10 That's cent expensive. beer night. Yeah. On that summer evening, more than 25,000 fans consumed 60,000 beers at 10 cents each. This led those drunken patrons to throw lit fireworks on the field, completely trash and tear up the stadium, and end the game with an all out war against wow. the players. So, how did this all happen? To answer that, we need to know why Cleveland would ever think to pull off such a stunt in the first place. And their crazy idea actually starts to make sense when you look at their circumstances leading up to the game. In the 70s, Cleveland was in a terrible situation as a city. During the decade leading up to 10 cent beer night, the city saw 600 factories shut down, resulting in thousands of workers being laid off. Poverty, drug addiction, and crime were at all time highs because of this, and over 177,000 people evacuated the city as a result. Case in point, the city of Cleveland was on the brink of explosion, and the remaining population could use a drink. And they would get the perfect opportunity to grab a few in the summer of 1974. On June 4th, 1974, the Cleveland Indians held a promotion that couldn't be passed up. Fans who attended the game that night could purchase an unlimited amount of 12 ounce beers at 10 cents each. For one dollar, you could get a ticket in the bleachers for 50 cents and five beers. It was cheaper than the bar. But why would the Indians offer such an unreal promotion to begin with? Well, not only was the city of Cleveland struggling, but their baseball team was too. They were an atrocious squad that finished close to last almost every year, and as a result, no one attended their games. So, the organization needed a way to save baseball in Cleveland, which led to the idea of offering fans unlimited 10 cent beers. But see, on any other night, this promotion might have worked just fine. But the game 10 cent beer night fell on was against the Texas Rangers, Cleveland's number one arch rival at the time. Oh, okay. Six days before the promotion, Cleveland was playing in Texas when all of a sudden a massive brawl spawned wow. between the two teams. Legit punches were thrown back and forth, leaving many players gushing with blood. And after the fight, Rangers fans were raining down trash and beer on the Indians players. After the game, the Rangers That's manager crazy. Billy Martin was asked if he was worried about retaliation from Cleveland fans for their scheduled game six days later. To which he responded, they don't have enough fans there to worry about. And just like that, wow. Cleveland now had a new rival, and they were coming to play in a city full of poverty written laid off factory workers on 10 cent. What led to that first fight? Because I, I thought that was actually a play that was going on. I oh, thought he was running from base to base, and then yeah, he kind of checked into a player and then bounced off of him, and then yeah. next thing he got tackled, and then all of a sudden, next thing I know, everybody's fighting. Yeah, I didn't give any context to that fight, but. If that fight happened, and then six days later, well, Tem yeah, tempers are still going to be frayed. Definitely, and then you chuck however many thousands of people in. Yeah, free beer, not free beer. Ten cents. Yeah, Imagine I, you can I, get into the stadium to watch the game for a dollar for yeah. get into the game and five beers. Yeah, you can't get much else for a dollar these days, can you? I mean, no, somebody. That's nuts. Yeah, no. I mean, the beers now are about seventeen dollars at some of the stadiums, I believe. Blimey. Crazy. And beer night. What could go wrong? Unsurprisingly, the promotion worked flawlessly. An average Cleveland Indians game saw maybe a few thousand fans in attendance, but 10 cent beer night brought in over 25,000 people. However, a large part of the crowd was made up of rowdy teenagers, as the drinking age back then was 18, and they were only there for the cheap beer and couldn't care less about their team or what happened at the game. Since you're able to drink at 18, that brought a whole different and a younger crowd to the stadium. Half the fans that were going to be there were there for the beer, not the Game. These fans also brought their own fireworks to the game, which was actually accepted in the 70s. So, before the first pitch was thrown, already drunk teenagers were lighting off fireworks and wow. smoke bombs in the stands, giving the stadium a war zone ambiance. But despite the ruckus, the game continued as normal. However, it wouldn't be normal for long. Just two innings in, after the Rangers hit a home run, a middle-aged woman streaked the field and flashed her breasts to the crowd, then tried to kiss the head umpire. During the fourth <laughs> inning, a fully naked man streaked the field after the Indians hit a home run. He's got a sock on, isn't he? 
a really muddy foot. Yeah, not not fully naked, is he? If he's got a sock on. How, how do you streak and forget <laughs> you got a sock on? <laughs> is that a sock? I don't know. I don't know. That, that is a sock. I love that this is a bit where... Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is important. One Bring guy jumping bits. out of the third base stands with his clothes in his hands. I'll never forget, he tried to get over the sock. fence, yeah. and he had no two black socks, and when he came down, the cop had one sock in his hand, and the other sock was on the guy's foot. <laughs> I told you this is going to be an integral it part is. of the storyline. Yeah. See? Question my pause in techniques. <laughs> it was also during the fourth inning that Cleveland realized they simply couldn't keep up with the number of beers being sold at the game. Fans were becoming more and more impatient as beer lines grew larger and larger. But instead of cutting everyone off, Cleveland insisted on putting the trucks of beer that were supplying the game right outside the outfield fence for easier access. And humorously, each truck was armed with two teenage girls selling beers to the laid off hammered factory workers, all while fire Fireworks and That's drums crazy. went off in the stadium. They had two girls working. One was collecting the money and one was trying to pour the beers and it just wasn't working. As the crowds waiting for beer kept growing larger and larger, the girls couldn't keep up with the demand. So they simply walked off the job, leaving unguarded trucks full of beer for the poor teenagers to raid. Fans were drinking beer straight from the taps, and some were even hauling taps off the trucks for their own personal use, all while security was nowhere to be found. We just start filling up our own containers. Some people flip the handle of the tap and just let it flow right into their mouths. The fifth inning featured plenty more streakers, most notably a father-son duo that hopped the outfield wall and mooned the Rangers outfielders. This stop Imagine that. Dad, I've got an idea. All right? <laughs> Hear me out. Get your clothes off. <laughs> it's probably the dad saying his son, wouldn't he? <laughs> son, this is going to be the one. Yeah. Do you want to go on TV? This is crazy. I can't believe that this yeah. game is actually still going on. I mean, we're only in the fourth inning, I think he just said. And I think, yeah, fourth or fifth, yeah. I can't believe this is still happening. Uh, how have you not called the game off at this point? Yeah, it's mad. 25,000 people. Why know. would you actually have two teenage girls <laughs> dealing with all the beer? Look at the amount of beer that was on. Oh, I have so many questions. Well, I don't know where to start. Girls, boys, men, two people serving 25,000 people beer. Yeah, exactly. It's not going to work. It's not going to no, work. No, no, no. 100%. I just don't. <laughs> it's got so many flaws. I, I just have so many questions. Play again. And players on the field patiently waited oh, as security God. chased down the pair around the diamond. The guys who ran across the field a father and son team and they dropped their drawers and mooned the crowd following that stunt a play in which the rangers pitcher was struck with a line drive to the stomach resulted in the upper deck of the stadium chanting hit him again hit him again harder harder at this point the game went from being crazy to pure insanity shortly after the line drive billy martin stopped the game after a controversial call from the umpire this upset the fans and provoked them to launch full cups of beer at billy he responded by blowing a kiss to the fans to which the fans <laughs> then responded by lighting fireworks and throwing them into the Rangers' bullpen. The umpire stopped play once again and ordered the Rangers to evacuate the dugout, but the game continued on. As the seventh inning rolled around, most sober people had left the ballpark, leaving only the drunk people in the stands. As they got drunker and drunker off free beers, the fans continued to throw beer, batteries, tennis balls, golf balls, and torn up seats at the Rangers with increasing frequency. The Rangers' first baseman estimated that he had 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at him. I must have had probably 15 or 20 pounds of hot dogs thrown at me at playing first base. The one memorable <laughs> thing I had thrown at me was an empty gallon jug of Thunderbird wine. I thought, this is uh, this is not all fun and games now. The eighth inning featured the Indians' oh, own front not. office staff leaving the game as fans hopped onto the field and started to tear off the padding off the outfield wall. The security crew that was picking up litter on the field abandoned their task cool. and went to left field to save the wall. Oh, well. Um, so how is this in the eighth inning? I don't know how they've managed to get to the eighth. How his, would... his beard is impressive, and I love his box. That shots. is a quality beard. <laughs> a combination, isn't it? It's fantastic, but... I can't believe this is in the eighth inning. Oh, it's crazy. I can't believe that the Rangers guy blew a kiss back to the crowd. Yeah, that's going to incite them further. I know. It? you got to have some cojones to do that. Yeah, definitely. I'd have been cowering in the um, dugout area. <laughs> Did you see where the, in the dugout area? The fans are literally directly above the dugout. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's dangerous, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I mean, they were. that was the Cleveland Indians that were in there when yeah. they were reaching down. But, um, yeah, no. Yeah, I, I can't believe... If this game actually finishes, it looks I mean, like it's going yeah, to. Yeah, it's a couple of millions. I just can't believe it's going to finish. More naked streakers began running around the outfield. As a matter of fact, so many streakers entered the field that security just stopped trying to catch them, all while the Indians and Rangers continued to play baseball. Now there's another group of morons running around in the outfield. <laughs> this has been a 
night of blatant stupidity. It was clear as day yep. that the ballpark was on the verge of collapse. But one streaker in particular sent the whole place overboard. The game's final inning featured a remarkable comeback from the Indians as they tied the game at five with a home run. They had the game winning run on second base ready to score. But suddenly, a 19-year-old named Terry Urich thought this was the perfect time to grab a souvenir from this wild night. While completely inebriated, he hopped the outfield fence and attempted to steal one of the Rangers players' hats in the outfield. I just wanted to get his hat, so I ran up behind Jeff Burroughs and I had it in my hand and then I dropped it. And so I went down to pick it up and I looked up and he looked at me and I said, oh, hell. He kicked me right in the thigh and he stumbled and fell down from the kick. Meanwhile, Billy was watching this unfold from his dugout and he assumed his player was getting attacked. So he ordered his team to grab bats and charge towards the fan. As the entire Rangers roster went into battle, the fans quickly noticed and responded by charging the field themselves to attack the team. Thousands upon thousands of fans wielding knives, chains, and clubs ambushed the Rangers and quickly outnumbered them. Realizing that the Rangers' lives might be in danger, the entire Indians team grabbed their bats and helped fight off their own fans for the Rangers. As the street fight wow. between the professional baseball players and the fans ensued, players swung bats at fans, while the rioters threw cups, rocks, bottles, hot dogs, and more at the teams. Many people were struck in the head with folding chairs, including the chief umpire, who started to bleed uncontrollably. And after a thrown hunting knife landed mere inches from his feet, he forfeited the game in favor of the Rangers and managed to escape the stadium. The two teams also managed to escape by protecting one another with their bats as fans tried to attack them. It had not been for the Indians players coming out to help us. It had been a real tragedy. And after a grueling 20 minutes went by, the Cleveland SWAT team showed up at the stadium and cleared the fans off the field with tear gas and riot sticks. In total, over 60,000 beers were consumed that night. There were seven emergency room-worthy injuries and a measly nine arrests. And understandably, Cleveland's 10-cent beer night went down as one of the worst promotional events in the history of professional baseball. See why it went down as the uh, worst promotion in history. How that is incredible! How nobody was killed. I mean, oh. Thankfully, nobody yeah. was killed. Yeah. How nobody was killed, I do not know. Even the I seven mean, seven injuries. Like, oh, whoever came up with that idea should have been arrested. I mean, that is ridiculous. What yeah. are you expecting? I just that's it's bordering on pathetic. I mean, the announcer said it. I agree with the announcer. Yeah, he, he was, was spot um, on. Yeah. He was spot on. I agree with everything he actually said, but. Yeah, that, that was just ridiculous. I mean, yeah. interesting to watch. As I say, just glad nobody was seriously injured or killed. Yeah. I don't, like I said, I don't know how. Been. Fair play on both teams helping each other out in that scenario as well, yeah. especially the Cleveland Indians. Fighting their own out. fans yeah. to help the Rangers. Yeah, to yeah, help yeah, the Rangers out. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you very much for that poll winner. That yeah. was a really interesting video. I really, really appreciate that. We hope you enjoyed it. Please do like, subscribe, and share. It really helps to grow the channel. We'll see you on the next one.